Okay, let me briefly go over some changes that I have made to my 12 inch mesh snare that I have for my Alicia's Nitro kit. I originally started out with this setup, which it works great, but I had a little problem. You'd put that down and glue it. Then you'd have this little metal plate or a big old metal plate with a piezo on it. That would be in there. Then you one inch high density foam and then you mesh head on top of that. Which that worked fine, but I was uh, having a little problem, which I might could have worked with that, but I came up with another way, kind of by accident, I guess. Now this little fella that you are looking here, looking at is started out as a rim trigger. On my old drum set, I couldn't get the rim and the snare head to work right, so I put an external on it to have a rim trigger. And you can buy these and mount them on your drums to do like cowbells and put various of other different triggering on it, along with your rim trigger. And this is kind of the setup I've got now, and other than this is a metal plate, and I used a brass plate from an old drum symbol and cut it out when I made this rim trigger, and that's basically what we're looking at here. And you put a piezo on it, glue it down, and this is yoga mat on the top and bottom. And uh, I just had that stuck for a demo. And you mount this thing in the corner of your drum somewhere. I first put it at the top, and little rolls that I do, I start at the top and work my way to the center, and you kind of get a low to a high row you know zzz, 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 zzz. that's that was poor but excuse me okay so i mounted it at the bottom and when i do my rim shot my hand would be hitting the trigger and i would be getting both so i ended up putting it away over here because i'm never using that side of the drum it's basically up and under the hi-hat or right at it and I just don't use that corner so that worked good for me for the snare for the Tom Toms put it right at the top and you're good to go and that's kind of what this is made up of a piece of brass glue a piezo on it crazy glue use yoga mat little strips and your mesh head will set again that and it will work such as that now the mesh head is a two ply now. I had to add a different ply because I was getting like a echo or a a flutter when I've done certain things and you want just a little like a little but it's pretty well solid hit before I'd hit it and it would go now To get a little and it's fine and you're going to hear uh, a little echo light because I'm just using my little camera and it's coming through this big old speaker and it's not running through the module end of the computer so please excuse that as you can see it works as you can see it works pretty good got good response at the top And that's about the way you want it. Okay, there you have it. Okay, the reason that I did this went from the plates is I was getting crossfire or feedback from the pad. I would hit, you see the little you see the little kicker lighting up? But when I'd hit it real hard, we'd get this. Now all I'm doing is touching the snare just a little bit. Okay? And that's what I would get. 
See, it don't do it now. And I was getting feedback, and what it was doing was vibrating these big old plates that I had in earlier. And you could tighten them down, but it would start choking the sound out. You couldn't do ghost notes and stuff as good. And you would kill it out on the edge as you tightened it up. So, so far this way is working out fine. I'm on the factory settings on the drums module, so I'm good to go. And hopefully this will work out. And uh, as I said, I did go to two ply to stop that little echo thing, as I already explained. I would get, and I would get, I would get like an echo. But it should be. Now when I let the drumsticks go, I get that, but hitting it like, see, it works out great. 